Good evening and welcome to Hudson Valley 6. Well, it's just about two weeks away from the November election and the race for New York's 19th Congressional District is as hard to pin down as ever. It has four candidates and still over 30% of the voters in the district are undecided as to who to vote for. Tonight we'll talk to three of those candidates about that race. We'll talk to conservative Right to Life candidate Joe Diaguardi, Democrat and Liberal Party candidate Dr. Richard Klein, and Reform and Independent Party candidate William Haas. We'll find out right where they stand. That's next on Hudson Valley 6. This is Hudson Valley 6, a comprehensive look at the issues facing the Hudson Valley, brought to you as a community service by U.S. Cablevision. Welcome. We're talking to Joe Diaguardi, Dr. Richard Klein, and Bill Haas, and we're talking about the 19th Congressional race, and we do want to tell you voters that we asked Congresswoman Sue Kelly to be on the show. We asked her to come on in the primary, actually, and she said that she didn't want to debate unless all the candidates were there, and we only wanted her and Mr. Diaguardi to debate, so she didn't come for that. And then we asked her to be here for this debate, and they said they only wanted to come if it was just her and Dr. Klein, so we haven't been able to get her, but we've got three other people, so we're going to go with it for now. Joe, you came out of a tough primary, um, actually got, uh, she, the sitting incumbent, uh, incumbent congresswoman only got 53% of the vote in the primary. How do, you, uh, how do you feel about that? I mean, where are you standing? Are you, are you scarred? Are you beat up? Are you still ready to well, go? I feel Can very you win? good. I feel very good. In fact, uh, we just missed by a couple of thousand votes, as you know. Uh, my campaign has been characterized by we the people, not we the party. That's why I didn't listen to the Speaker of the House, Newt Gingrich. Uh, you remember that I told him that he's a congressman from Georgia. He's Speaker of the House, but he's not a resident here in the 19th Congressional District. And I've carried that same theme forward in the general election. Uh, I've got an office now in Dutchess County, uh, right here on 9D in Wampanoag Falls. I've got uh, one in Putnam, right on Route 6. These are uh, staffed by volunteers. Uh, the volunteers raise the money to keep it open. Uh, so How's you might it say it, it, look it looks very good. It yeah. looks very good because I'm out campaigning on Main Street. And you get a feel for the people on Main Street. Okay. Main Street in the 19th Congressional District. And I feel very good about this race. How's the campaign going, Dr. Klein? Well, uh, contrary to Joe, I think that uh, we're way ahead. Uh, we've had a poll that was uh, done about a month ago. That was before we started advertising. And it shows that uh, Sue Kelly is very, very weak, uh, probably the weakest incumbent throughout the United States. Was that an internal poll, a Democratic poll, your poll, or was that it a That was a national poll? poll done by a national pollster in, uh, from Washington. But was it a Democratic pollster or, or yes, a non a, a Democratic, Democratic okay. pollster, very well-respected uh -huh. pollster. Uh -huh. And uh, that's before we even started doing our advertising. Uh, I feel that we have a better than 50-50 shot right now, uh -huh. uh, and it's looking very good. Uh, and. I expect to be the next congressman in this district. Mr. Haas, you're in the race. Many of your views are similar to Mr. Diaguardi. Many of, many of them aren't. Obviously, your name recognition is not that much out there. We're trying to get it. Why run? Why run? Why run? I believe we need to change. The Republican Democrats have been in control for a long time. They control the government at the local, the state, and the federal level, and they've not done anything for the people. When you they, say not anything, can you give a specific well, example? Well, if, if you look at what's happened over the last 50 years, or, or just recently, the corruption in, in the parties are pretty much the, the adage is Specifics. What? whatever whatever government has, well, money can buy government. And if you look at just the, the recent one with Indonesia, the common cause suit against both the, Rep the Republican and Democratic parties for campaign corruption. I mean, it goes on and on. Uh, Proposition 3, the last time around, they put on a ballot and they absolutely tried to deceive the people. And now they're coming through with the environmental bond issue. There is little difference between the Republicans and Democrats. If we can get our message out, we'll be coming stronger and stronger all the time. And if you look at what they did to Perot, uh, he had a message in 1992, he got the deficit talked about, he got NAFTA and GATT talked about, and they blanked them out this time because they were so afraid of what would happen if the people really heard the truth. What about the deficit, Dr. Klein? What about the balanced budget? I mean, you have your own president <clears throat> that twisted arms, and this is other people's words and people in the party, to get people to not vote for a balanced budget. 
And you're in, is that a goal of yours in Congress, to make sure we have a balanced Senator, budget? I personally want to make sure that we do balance the budget. I am in favor of a balanced budget amendment. I mean, our country is spending $300 billion a year just on the debt service, just on interest on the amount of money that we owe the rest of the world. Uh, and if one just thinks about it, we pay so much money for, uh, for the uh, loans that we have to take. That's why it's so expensive to take a loan, because there isn't that much money left over. Now, the president has done a great job in balancing the budget. I mean, he's gone from uh, three years ago from $300 billion in uh, deficit to almost $150 billion. So he's cut the deficit in half over the past three but years. But you understand that the, the deficit projection numbers say that in 1997, the year after he would have been elected without having to be reelected in 2000 or the year after a Republican would have been in that deficit goes up continually from 97 and skyrockets the way uh, the president has uh, worked on it right now and the way I personally will work on it by not giving as much money towards uh, defense I mean the Defense Department has asked for seven didn't even ask for seven billion dollars three years ago and they got it I don't think we ought to be throwing away our money on Star Wars and I think that we're gonna have to really look into corporate loopholes where corporate taxes have gone down from 50% uh, about 10 years ago to 10 12% right now in 10 seconds just to answer this question then I want to move on to something would you break with if if you were in Congress back when that happened, would you have broken and come out against the president when he said we're just going to defeat the balanced budget amendment? Hundred percent. I am in favor of a balanced budget amendment. I have been all along, and I would fight for one. Okay. But Terrence, the problem is which numbers do we use? That's why you need a certified public accountant back in Congress. As you recall, I'm the only practicing CPA ever elected to Congress. The public is getting sick and tired of the numbers game. You look at these presidential debates, uh, who's pulling numbers from here, who's pulling numbers from there, and no matter what numbers they use, they're on a Mickey Mouse cash basis of accounting, which business couldn't use today without getting the corporate officials indicted for securities fraud. Mm -hmm. So we need to put government on the same set of books as we do publicly traded corporations where we protect the shareholders, let's protect the taxpayers. I'm running as a Republican on the conservative line. I'm a conservative. How would I balance the books? Number one, I would downsize government. We have too much government at every level, starting from the local to the state to the federal. What does that mean, though, downsize government? All right, I mean, take the federal government. And they're saying, okay, downsize government, too much government. Specifics. What would you Be get specific. Rid of? Why do we need a Department of Education in the federal government? Let's move that back to the state. We don't need that bureaucracy What does the there. Department of Education do or don't do that makes well, you think it could be getting It's written? trying to set national standards. I think that the states are well qualified to deal locally with the issue of education. As a matter of fact, there's a big debate going on right now as to the funding of public education. People are getting fed up with their property taxes going up and up with the school taxes. Uh, we're driving seniors out of our communities. We're taking younger people who have high <coughs> mortgages on homes. We don't give them credit for that mortgage. We put a school tax on the full value of the property. It's got to change. But re re you got to get rid of the Department of Education, Department of Commerce, Department of Energy, downsize the Internal Revenue Service, and privatize the National Endowment of the Arts over a period of time. What do you want to do with education? What do I want to do with education? I, we have to move it back into the local area. So you agree basically with what you Yeah, saying. the problem we have is that the government, and, and you have to take, it takes a long time, we need a whole show on Goals 2000. Mm -hmm. But if you look at what Goals... What about Goals 2000? What is it that, 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 that they're, they're doing there that you don't like? Well, let's just take a, a specific. That, that's the thing you like to do. Let's take a look at reading, right? You have two basic concepts. You have phonics and you have whole language. Uh, the government is pushing whole language. The, the objective is not to push implementation of education, but set the criteria and say, I want all children in the third grade to read X, right? Mm -hmm. Or I want sixth graders to read Y. And then you let the local school districts, you let the teachers choose the implementation. I taught for a year. I'm certified to teach from K through 12. And, and one of the things you know is each teacher has a style. And you can't force style on a teacher. You let the teacher use their personality and their style to the best advantage in that classroom. What do you say about the National Education Association okay. that sometimes, I'm going to let you get to the education, that, so, <coughs> that people have said, rightly or wrongly, that kind of pushes the goals 2000, they have a political agenda underneath. Okay, I don't see any political agenda. This race is going to be about differences. I happen to disagree with Sue Kelly, Joe DiGuardia, and William Haas. I happen to be a teacher. I, I teach at medical school. My wife teaches at kindergarten. I think that we need a Department of Education. I think that what we have to do is put more money up front into the education. I think that 
the main purpose, one of the main focuses of our government is to make sure that we, our children get educated. I but think they're we not. Well, I think that we have to refocus to make sure that they are. Uh, number one, we have to make sure that there are federal guidelines. There are no federal guidelines. We have to put money up to make sure that children, yes, I agree, children throughout the United States should have a basic guideline that they all have to read by the third grade. Each state is not keeping up with that. Uh, number two, I think that Goals 2000 is a, is a uh, program where monies are being put into uh, educate children in higher mathematics and science to make them elevated in the field. We're dealing in a high-tech society, a high-tech world in order for the America to compete. <coughs> Our children have to be educated in higher, in high-tech uh, knowledge. Uh, we're not going to be able to compete with South America for making a shirt for a dollar a day. We have to be high-tech, high-computerized, and uh, and I also think we have to put a lot of money into the Head Start program. It's been shown that if you put money up front, kids get into Head Start, they go on to finish college, or they go on to higher education. Okay, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back, and we're going to get right back into education and a lot of other things. You stay where you are. Welcome back. We're talking to Dr. Richard Klein, William Haas of the Republican Independent Party, and Joe DiAguardi for the 19th Congressional District race. And we asked Sue Kelly to be here, and she didn't accept our invitation. So we have three other people here. Joe, quickly, you were going to say something about education? Well, let me say something about Sue Kelly, because she's missing in action again. And in my opinion, that reduces her to a minor candidate in this race. She did it in the primary. Out of nine debates, she attended one. And uh, we see the same pattern here in the general election. I think that cheats the voters in this district. She is the representative. Uh, I think they would like to see her on her toes, reacting spontaneously to the questions that are raised, uh, not press releases mm -hmm. signed by her uh, campaign manager. And uh, it's not democratic, and it certainly is not fair to have that. I just wanted to make that point. Mm -hmm. Education. Uh, I think I'm the only candidate that has been attending local school board meetings during this campaign. Uh, last week, I was in the Mount Pleasant School Board meeting, Lakeview Schools. The week before that, uh, Mayapac. Uh, the week before that, Osling. And about a month ago, Yorktown. I've spoken at the Yorktown meeting. Uh, I'm there to listen to see what is going on. And the one thread that goes through the whole process is that we have too much administration. The teachers' unions are driving the system. Uh, they're protecting retired teachers. I sat in on one meeting. There was, right in front of me, a superintendent, assistant superintendent, a business manager, many assistant principals. That's before you even get down to the teachers. Mm -hmm. We need to increase the quality of education by rewarding the teachers. Let's get more money to the teachers and less administration, and let's change the way the that we allocate the cost that. of public education. The union's got a lock on that. Well, we've got to change that. Well, and that's where I disagree with Dr. Klein. I think the, uh, the, the teachers' unions are doing a disservice to the community by uh, forcing the issue with all this administration. Uh, we need to reward performance, not administration. Okay. I, I have no idea of where you're all coming from. I think that the teachers' union are there to protect the rights of teachers. Just as any other labor union throughout the United States, there, there are unscrupulous corporations, there are unscrupulous companies, and we have to protect the working people of America. I come from a family of labor. All of my members of my family worked worked for companies, and they were in unions. And I think that there's nothing wrong with a with a teacher. If there wasn't a teachers' union, we wouldn't have teachers that were that were qualified, we, that were retrained all the time. We wouldn't have teachers uh, that uh, have to pass certain. But the standards. private schools are beating out a lot of the public schools without those qualifications well, in terms of, of test scores. Of, also, everybody that goes to well, a private there, school there gets to high school. There are a lot of reasons. There are a lot of reasons. First off, people who go to private schools come from certain family economic backgrounds with peer pressure from their parents uh, that uh, makes there a certain selection of, of students. And then you're left with a public school system with uh, decreasing tax base and uh, decreased uh, amount of students who are, who are being taken out. So one has to shore up the, private, the public school system, and I think that's where the monies have Why to go. Why don't you support the school voucher system, then, if you believe that the people that are, you know, in, in the voucher socio system would actually ruin the public school system. I disagree. You, well, that's what we're, this, this is about disagreements. <clears throat> the voucher, I believe in charter schools, but the voucher school system, aside from sending kids to uh, parochial schools, be they Jewish, uh, Protestant, or Catholic, is something that I believe is anti-constitution. I think that paying... But you do say it's okay to send them to private religious schools. 
if if the kids if the families want to pay for it by themselves. But you I, don't agree that vouchers should go into that and include that? Definitely like not 100 percent. I don't believe in the voucher <coughs> system. I think that if you start uh, encouraging kids, uh, that is, if you start paying people to start going to uh, religious schools or private schools, you can't pay for that because then you're going to take cherry pick out of the public school system even more. I think that what you have to do is shore up public school system. I'm a product of the public school system. I went through uh, uh, through all of my training through public school. I went through a city colleges of, of New York, and I became a success, and I don't see why anybody else can't have that same. Well, times were different back then than they are now. Obviously, the pressure and the social pressure that are on all the kids. I mean, they, some of the kids in the inner cities, they're, they're dealing with guns and things like that. I mean, that's not the norm, but it's... it's that, that is true. Go ahead. I believe you have to be consistent, and my consistency is throughout all my areas of topics that we're going to talk about, and that is distribution of power. What you find in education is a power base, and the one who's weakest is the public. An example of that is whoever heard of someone negotiating contracts before the budget is even passed? And that's what we have. I'm a member of ACTOR, and we're suing on what we call a meaningless vote. The public votes something down, and then it's passed anyway. And the reason for yeah, I was going to the ask reason you. for that is the contracts are negotiated before the budget is in place by the unions, the, by the unions and the supervisors. See that the, there's no distinction. What you have is a power base in education, and the board is sitting there taking on information from two mm -hmm. people, the supervisor and the unions, mm -hmm. that have vested interest. And as you pointed out, that they're not interested in education; they're there to service the teachers and the administrators. What's this election going to turn on right now? What do you well, think the major the major issue is? <clears throat> There's no the question. Ma the major issue, and I wanted to comment on the, the school voucher system, but, but let me focus on the major issue. We're drowning in taxes and we're drowning in debt. There is no doubt in my mind that the next generation is in severe jeopardy. We've disguised the real cost of government and taxes are much too high in the 19th Congressional District. <coughs> I would be certainly for a flat tax that's fair. Flat tax means it's simple, but is it going to be fair? I think we've got to do some things to make it fair. What do you I'm mean, also like for a full 15% tax cut. Uh, I would endorse the Dole Kemp tax plan, and the way I would pay for it, and, and many people don't articulate it this way, is that we've got to reduce the size of the federal government and bring government closer to the people where they can react to it, where they can make it more accountable. Much like the school boards that I go to. If the people don't like a budget in a school board, they can remove many of the people on that board within the next year. That's where the rubber hits the ground in democracy. We need to make government more accountable at all levels. Where do you think the what do you think the main issue for you is? Where this election is going to turn? Okay. There are there are two main issues for me, and then I'll comment on the tax issue. Uh, I personally believe that the major issue that faces the Hudson Valley right now is jobs, lack of jobs, people being downsized out of work. And you've heard my ads. The very first thing that I'm going to do when I get into into Congress is to put together a Hudson Valley coalition. We have it all set up for the first week of January. Uh, we're going to get all the business leaders, all of the labor leaders, the elected officials, whether they are. Rep Republican and Democratic, get them all into two large uh, halls, hook them up by uh, by satellite, and of course, the, and try to figure out ways of bringing back high-tech jobs to the Hudson Valley, and also how to retrain workers that have been uh, downsized out of work. Health care we'll get to later, I'm sure, and therefore that's my second goal in life is to do something about managed care. If I could just say a comment. About a, a minute for Mr. Haas. Okay, just a, a two seconds. I, I think the worst thing that this country could do is give a 15% across the board tax break. Uh, it happened under voodoo economics or the Reaganomics of the, of the 80s. We saw that our country went into so terrible debt. That's why we're paying so much on interest today. Uh, we can't do that again. It would only, most people would only be affected, uh, the middle class people would only be affected by getting a couple of hundred dollars back at the end of the year. We'd rather balance the budget. What do you think about that? What is it, where is the election going to turn? The election is going to turn as the people become informed. And I believe the major issue with government is ethics, and that is election, campaign, and lobby reform. And we need initiative, referendum, and recall. The people have to get back control, and we no longer can tolerate uh, I want to say graft, but the difference between graft and gratuity is when you get money for services rendered and when you get money for services you provide to the giver. We're going to, to take a break right now. When we get back, we're going to talk about election reform and campaign reform, so you stay with us.
welcome back. We're talking to William Haas, Richard Klein, and Joe Diaguardi about the 19th congressional race. And again, we invited Sue Kelly to be here. She said that she only wanted to debate with Dr. Klein and herself, not with all the candidates. But we wanted all the candidates, so she's not here. Let's talk about campaign reform. There's been an issue. We got some faxes in from the um, Kelly campaign saying that you said you wouldn't take tax, uh, PAC money and that you are taking PAC money. And then they had a retractment saying that they, they did realize that you said only corporate PAC money. So they said that they were wrong on that. But what's wrong? Are corporates evil? Uh, I don't want to have any, uh, any way of looking as if somebody is influencing me for voting for the tobacco industry or voting for Dole Pineapple or something like that. We don't want to take any special interest money where it comes to business or things that are harmful, such as the NRA, and I hope we talk, talk about the NRA, and tobacco. I, I happen to be a physician. I think those things are harmful, that we should be doing something about teenage uh, smoking. We should be doing something about uh, keeping that ban on, on automatic weapons, uh, on assault weapons, rather. So I have gone on record as, in fact, somebody was even shocked when I told them I wasn't going to take their realty money because the realty board of uh, of America, the National Board, tried to do away with the Endangered Species Act. But you have taken PAC money. PAC money uh, from education, from labor, and... From uh, people that you agree with philosophically. Philosophically, and I would right up front come out and say that I would support the people who work. Okay. What about that, Joe? What, I mean, financially, you're, you had a lot of money, and now you're in this, after the primary, how are you doing with... Well, we had to raise a lot of money from the people. I didn't have the support from the parties. And therein lies the problem because uh, we have a system right now uh, which has to be changed. It prevents good people from running uh, for office. Uh, in this particular race, you have a hotly contested uh, congressional seat. It's one of the very few in America that you can say that because the parties tend to intimidate out the competition. Uh, state rules tend to make it difficult to get on the ballot. And then you have to face the gauntlet of raising money, which is not easy to do. Uh, and in an area like New York where the media costs a lot, uh, it's not a level playing ground. So we need campaign uh, finance reform. And if the parties wanted it, we would have had it. Both parties didn't want it. The same thing with term limits. They put up four different versions of term limits so that everybody could say they voted for term limits and it didn't pass. Yeah. So the public is, uh, is at the point, I think, where they're not going to be fooled by this. And I have to make that point loud and clear that the two-party system is not working. I'm a Republican running on a conservative line, but we need campaign finance reform and we need term limits. Okay, right now it looks like the polls, I mean, I, mean, I think your internal poll came out. There was like 30% for Sue Kelly, 22% for yourself, 15% for you, 30% undecided. Where does that put you in, if that poll is even correct? Well, I think I, my strength's going to come from a voter turnout. If we don't get a voter turnout, I will not do well. If we get a large voter turnout, I will do well. If you look at the lines on the ticket, they're all Republicans and Democrats except my line, which is independence. All the rest have Republicans and Democrats running on them. Um, so the Independence Party is a true third party, and especially in my case, I have no strings attached to any parties or any other PACs or individuals with large contributions. I personally believe you should not get, take money from outside your district. Let's clear up this penthouse thing. We talked about it once. The Kelly yeah, campaign. I do want to respond to, uh, okay, this poll business. The reason why we're, and I'll get to that uh, penthouse thing. The reason why Sue Kelly has been looking for something to pick on is because she is losing in her polls. It's very obvious. They're trying to get away from the issues. She can't defend her stance on the terrible votes that she's made. And so they're looking for some picayune kind of thing to try to catch me one way or another. But you know what their response to that is that if their po if your poll was correct, they said their polls are not that way. If their polls were that way, uh, they'd be doing a much more aggressive campaign. Obviously, they're doing what they're doing. They're desperate. A hundred percent, that's what I believe. We have national pollsters. I'd like to see who did their poll, if they did a poll uh, that 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 is of any value. Uh, now, the question was, Pentas, I have a cousin who works at a magazine, a group of magazines. She is a, an employee of, of uh, General Media. She gave me her own personal check. She's my first cousin. It's like ridiculous that I wouldn't accept a gift from my first cousin. Now, it's we the same thing as one of my seconds. one of my patients who Not pumps even. gas at Mo Mobile Oil gave me a, a check for fifty dollars. That doesn't mean that I'm taking money from Mobile Oil. Similarly, this is my cousin, and uh, I am very proud of her, and I accepted a personal gift from her. We got to go. We're going to talk about the NRA, Medicare, and abortion next night. So you stay with us. Come back tomorrow night. I'm Terrence Marcus. Good night.